Yo, what's going on, everybody? Ultimate DJ's here from the Teaching Trek YouTube channel with another one here for you today. Uh, we might be running a little bit late on this. We're going to try to make this into a quick and dirty. It could be timely for those of you participating in an SLB, but maybe it's just something that you reference a little bit down the road if there are other opportunities to try to earn this guy, and you got to decide whether or not it is something you want to do. We're going to take a look today at the new epic Borg Hue uh, in his below deck abilities. There is some interesting things here. And again, uh, shout out very quickly to Jules Verne for putting everything together for us. We appreciate that. Thank you very much. And for all the players who contributed towards this data, this is some crazy, crazy stuff. So let's talk about Hue. First of all, when we're talking about his below deck ability, which is really all we're going to talk about. And I, I kind of maintain what I said earlier in the arc is simply that is where his value is. And, and with this particular officer, it's pretty significant value. Let me show you a couple of examples first. Obviously, uh, as an Ops 49, Jules Verne did a lot of this testing. We got Epic Hue, and he just went against a capital city trader. Okay, first of all, you can see not a heck of a lot of difference in you know what was taken and not taken and so forth. He was able to kill it pretty simply. Um, so easy peasy, right? Let's go to the actual detailed analytics here. Now, this first one where he just ran Strange New Worlds crew with no under deck, you'll take a look down here and you got 43% crits, which is completely fine. But you pop over here and we see uh, with Hugh, we actually only saw about 40% crits. Now, obviously a little bit of RNG there. That's completely fine. But uh, we did see relatively level and maybe even a little bit less when we used Hugh, there is a reason for that. And you can kind of see the result just over several hostels is that the overall crit chance was roughly about the same. Obviously, you could add some hull breach, get get a few bit, uh, a few more. But nonetheless, crit chance stayed about the same. So let's go to our next example where we take a look at one of these G5 uh, hostels, a G5 hostel with uh, these abilities up here. That's how it's stacking up. So we'll take a look at how those stats laid out. Now, this is where it starts to get really, really interesting. And we're going to explain to you why. You got an extra 20% overall crit chance all throughout the entire battle. You take a look without you, you got 40% over here with you, about 62.5% increase uh, with you under deck. Why might that be? Well, we're going to explain that for you here in just a moment. Let's take a look at another one. Let's take a look at Swarm. A lot of people doing Swarm all the time. You got your Franklin here, and yes, by intent, he's running Kang in the captain's chair. That simply means that loot gain, not quite as important to Jules as getting that extra uh, extra ability out of Kang's captain's maneuver. Okay, so we're going to run that. Of course, we still use Spock and Jayla, which makes sense. Uh, we come down here to the analytics, and we see 16% crit without Hugh and a whopping 52% crit chance with you. This is over several hostiles. Uh, really, if you take a look at this, he says doubling your kills. You take a look down here. Uh, oh, you can't see because of the logo. Let me whap -ow that out of the way. Eight kills per hull, up to 17 with running Hugh under deck. Why the differential between these two hostiles? We'll come back. Uh, let's take a look at a Jem Hadar. Same kind of thing. All right. We're going to come down here, take a look at Jem Hadar. 8% on the crit chance here, 74 percent on this gem head our hostile it's a level 52 battleship why are these things happening here's a 53 let's punch up obviously we can see the big difference here died on the first one one on the second one and again 11 percent crit chance all the way up to 84 percent crit chance on this 53 battleship so why could that be uh, by the way, this was this one was just for funsies. That's a 49 Gem Hadar battleship, okay? With uh, sorry, Gem Hadar Explorer with Pike Morochan. That's all fine, but uh, that's a legionary. That's a legionary, folks. All right, with the 49 Gem Hadar again, without Hugh and with Hugh, kind of demonstrating the power of that. Take a look here. Uh, Eight percent crits from a legionary. Eighty-nine percent crit chance with the legionary with hugh under deck so why is this happening well this is it right here okay hugh's got a 45 percent chance to increase the critical hit chance by 25 percent for two rounds after being hit now this is what is crucially differential about this officer as compared to others this is not a per weapon opportunity this is a per hit opportunity however it does say, uh, let me move the cat. It does say weapons with multiple shots will only trigger this ability once per attack. Now, notice it's not an opportunity. It's not a proc chance, but it'll only trigger one, meaning that with these three shots out of energy weapon number one, okay, these three shots out of the first weapon, 
I've got three rolls. I got three opportunities at this 45% chance. If one of them procs, I get a plus 25. If two of them proc, I still only get a plus 25. Okay, so that's that's it. All right. But what you're looking for are multiple shots, which is going to increase your odds at getting the prog. But then when there's multiple weapons, you've got the uh, opportunity to stack that crit chance by 25 percent per weapon. This does not have a cap, folks. All right. So if I proc here at weapon one, weapon two and weapon three, I'm getting a plus 25 percent crit chance. Now, do be aware that this is much like Eurydice in that it will proc immediately. So if I get a if I get a weapon one proc, then round one does count for one of my two. He will carry over into round two, but then it'll be expired in round three unless I get other procs. If I proc not on weapon one, not on weapon two, but down here on weapon three, then that's unfortunate, all right? Because I had these other six shots that were coming at me that I didn't proc, so this still would count as the first round but this is pretty significant here massively significant so when we take a look at some of these other hostels the reason that we saw no major change with the capital city trader is because there's only one weapon all right and one shot which means only per round i only have one opportunity at this op uh, at this chance all right when i'm looking at extra weapons or even weapons with multiple shots Going up and looking at the G5 hostile here. Three shots, but two weapons in the odd rounds. Well, that means in round one, I'm going to get three chances to proc. All right. Uh, and then maybe even a uh, another three chances to proc for a second buff. All right. Why is Swarm so amazing? Three weapons with three shots each. By the way, this does matter by level of the hostel. So you're definitely going to want to check stfc.space to take a look at the firing pattern of the hostels that you're hitting. This is a level 50 swarm with nine chances to proc up to three times just in that first round. You take a look at the gem head R. This is why it's even more significant. Four weapons in the first round, 12 opportunities to proc in his battle log he actually got the proc on all four of these weapons which means going in to round two he had a 100 percent crit chance that's massive and that's exactly why the the exos in action space are so great now are these uh, is Hugh great against the action hostiles no because once you get that exocomp you're already at a hundred percent anyway as a matter of fact it 100 percent depends on the number of shots that are being fired per weapon now i'm not sure that there's anything in the game that's firing nine shots oh wait there is right here an action chrysalis with nine shots in round four nine shots off one weapon all right that's nine opportunities to get your proc if you look here even with a tier one hue that is a 99.5% chance to actually get your proc off of this weapon. 99.5%. It's a virtual guarantee. If you come down here to one shot per weapon, only 45%. But as you scale this thing up, your odds increase because you have multiple opportunities at that 45% rare and are at that 45% roll. And you can see here, as you tear up you, it gets even better. Uh, tier three, tier four, tier five. Listen, at tier five, it's starting procs 100% anyway. I mean, that's a guarantee, so it doesn't matter. He becomes more effective as you tear him up. And uh, when I say more effective, I mean more broadly able to be used on every hostile within the game. Here at tier one, though, still pretty magnificent when we talk about maybe action or we talk about maybe swarm or we're talking about G5 miners, if you're hitting those. Uh, the gem had art, so no brainer. Okay, there are amazing, amazing benefits for having Hugh as you tear him up, but even using him on hostels that have multiple shots. It's an absolutely amazing thing. So you guys, uh, we wanted you to have the information. This is how Hugh will work. This is a quick and dirty on the new Epic Officer available in the game. Now, if you're watching this down the road, this just tells you how to use him, where he becomes best, and, and what hostels are going to, how you, how you determine what hostels you want to use him on. But if you're watching this immediately upon release, you may notice that there is actually a solo leaderboard for him. 
Does this change your perception of the value of this officer? Are you going to spend materials on him or are we going to wait for next time? That kind of depends on whether or not you really want these kinds of advantages in PVE hostile hunting. Do, as a quick note, be aware, this does not affect armadas in any way, shape, or form. This is only red triangle hostiles, and that is it. We also, by the way, proved that he doesn't work on gold mission bosses. Just throwing that out there, okay? There you go. That is epic Borg Hugh. And now you know his value, what he can do, and what he might be able to do for your grinding, your grind time. We talk about things like trying to reduce grind time. This may not look like the most obvious answer, but it kind of is, right? More hostels, maybe a little bit faster, uh, or at least fewer trips if you had to make multiple runs because and, and cheaper repair bills, too. All those good things. That is epic Borg you community what do you think whoa, whoa, whoa i disappeared what do you think community leave your comments down below in the section we'll do our best to answer those for you and uh, does this change your perception of the value are you going to play in the solo leaderboard and again if you're watching this later how hard are you chasing this officer does this add value to the 40 plus players who are actually engaging in the borg solo armada loop i'd be very curious to hear all of your insight please subscribe while you're here we would very much like to invite you to our friends and family here and uh, increase the number of subscribers that we got please be sure to share with all of your friends and family like click on the little bell so you know when we do other content here and as always have an absolutely wonderful day commanders my name is ultimate djs i am feline of nine and your friendly neighborhood cat borg saying meow for now love you minute we will catch you on the next one meow resistance is adorable and don't you daggone well forget it